Welcome to the quick start guide for new players in Albion Online. Today I'm going to help you get up and running towards success as a brand new player. After doing the tutorial and the quest to follow, you basically get this message that tells you that's it for the quests, the world is yours and you're free to do whatever you want. And this is the exact moment where a lot of beginners don't know what to do within this sandbox game. So my goal today is to share raw footage of what I would do starting at this exact point to get my progress going in the most effective way possible. During this video, you'll learn a lot about the game as I will do my best to explain my thought process whilst I make certain decisions. And I'll also introduce you to various content where I provide you with top tier builds. At the end of this video, you'll be able to farm fame and make bank without having to rely on anyone else. Now at this point, your inventory probably looks something like this and you most likely have about 10K in silver, a bunch of tier two, tier three items, whatever you got from the tutorial and the quests, but most importantly, the Adept's Royal Sigil. This item is the one we're going to sell to get our first handful of silver to buy our very first set, which will be a tier four solo dungeon set. So we're going to head to the repair station first because we want to make sure everything is repaired so we can sell everything. So just click on repair all. And once you have done that, go to the market. Do not overcomplicate things. I'm just going to sell everything except my donkey. So a couple things about the market. Uh, you have a couple tabs here where you have uh, different options. And the second tab, sell, is um, where we are going to sell our items. Um, as you can see, there are four different actions. And a lot of beginners, they make the mistake of um, selling directly. So in this case, they would click on sell here. But, you know, you can also sell items as a sell order. And as you can see, if I sell it directly, I will only get 37 silver. And if I click on sell order, I will get 92 silver. That's almost three times as much. Now, if you click on the little arrow here, you can see why that happens. Because if you have sell activated, you will sell it to the highest buy order. Whereas if you put it up as sell order, it will come in this list and people will be able to buy it from you. So what I personally like to do is click on sell order, um, go lower with like a couple silver and then create the sell order. So that's what I'm going to do for everything here, except for the adept's royal sigil. So because this one, we need the silver from this one right away. And as you can see, it does sell for 43k as a sell order. The buy order is 41k, um, which is, you know, 2k silver difference, which may seem a lot like a beginner, but we need to cash quick. So this one we are going to sell directly. And now we have almost 50k silver. So let's just put everything else up as a sell order as well. And one thing I must say, though, um, it could be I just saw a couple items where the sell order and the buy order had barely any difference. So you could sell them for like with this one, right? This one, the sell order is seven, buy order is five. And I tend to go lower with a couple silver, so I could also sell directly. But, you know, I think it's just more, it's faster to just put everything up as a sell order. And if the buy order is the same, it will go through anyway. We don't need anything um, from the items we have so far. And your inventory may be slightly different. You may have gotten like a couple different drops than I did. You may have more silver, more items, maybe less, but it shouldn't be too much of a difference. And either way, the Adaptorial Sigil, the 40k we got from that, will be plenty for the tier 4 set we are going to buy. Once you've put everything up as a sell order, we are now going to buy our very first tier 4 set, which will be a solo dungeon set. And I already made a guide on the perfect solo dungeon build, and within that guide I had two build options. We had the main build and we had the budget build. And since we are beginners, we don't have too much silver, we will go for the budget build. The budget build is also slightly more tanky than the um, main build. So that will help, especially as a beginner, where you are bound to take um, more hits than someone more experienced. For this, we need the Scholar Cow and we need to buy a tier 4 one. So just type in Scholar Cow, select tier 4 here. Um, don't select any enchantments, just keep it on all. Um, the quality, we will get to in just a bit, but the first thing you should do is sort this on price. Otherwise, you may buy something that's super expensive and waste all your gold. So sort it on price, have it on the lowest. 
Then we go to quality and as you can see, the normal quality, like the cheapest one is 600 here. If we go to good, it's 680. Outstanding is 705. And excellent is 1.9K. Um, the quality affects the item power. So if we click on this color cow here and we go to the cheapest one, we can see this one has 700 item power. Whereas the excellent one has 750 item power. So it's stronger. It makes for more stats. Let's check the masterpiece as well. Well, the masterpiece is very expensive. I think that outstanding is a great choice. It's It still makes for 20 extra item power and it's only 100 silver more than the regular one. So go with outstanding for the Skalakal and maybe when you are watching this video, the economy might be completely different. So maybe you can even buy an excellent one if it's not super expensive. The second item we need is a mercenary jacket. Once again, check the different qualities. And as you can see, an excellent is 1.5k, whereas cheapest one is 1k. So we will go with the excellent one. The third item you want to buy is an assassin shoe. Once again, go with an outstanding one for this one. And then we want to buy a cape. Outstanding seems fine for this one as well. Um, we can't equip um, these items yet. I will explain how to do that in just a bit. But first we need to buy our weapon, which will be the Spirit Hunter. Now, the cheapest Spirit Hunter is 3.2k, 4.6k. Yeah, so we definitely want to go for the um, good one, which is 4.6k. All right, so now we have our very first set, but we cannot equip it as you see. Um, we do need a bag as well, so let's quickly buy a bag. I think an outstanding one is fine. Alright, so how do we unlock these items? If you click on the scholar cow, for example, and you press on equip, let's bring this here. Um, it says you can't equip it. It will take you to the destiny board. And as you can see, I can't equip it. It says requirements for next level kill creatures of tier 3 with novus scholar cow or better equipped so what we're going to do is buy a novus scholar cow let's see if we have this one equipped so we can equip the tier 3 scholar cow as well so we're going to buy either a novus scholar cow or a journeyman's is it called i believe let me quickly confirm yeah journeyman's scholar cow what you can do is simply type in scholar cow select tier 3 here don't need quality on this one just go for the cheapest one and equip this one same goes for all the other items so we want to unlock them but as you can see with this one um, we can actually use learning points to equip it so we don't even have to level it and buy the cheaper one we can just use the learning points here and equip it so we can equip the mercenary jacket and here you want to select the bloodlust skill which is a skill that will heal you um, upon every attack Let's do this for all the items, basically. We can't equip this one either, so we need Novus Mercenary Shoes. So type in Mercenary Shoes here. And equip those. Stay honest. As for the spear, we need to use a Journeyman Spear, so let's buy that one. Just type in Spear. Tier 3. If you haven't unlocked this one yet, you may have to backtrack one more level. But a tier 3 one, outstanding quality, 900 silver, that seems fine. Now the reason we are going to play the Spirit Hunter is because when we click on the Spirit Hunter, you can see a lot of skills, a lot of abilities we cannot use yet. But with the Spears, you need the first abilities for solo dungeons. So this is an AoE. This is an AoE and this is an AoE as well. So this is like the best weapon, probably one of the best weapons for beginners. Um, and in fact, this is one of my favorite weapons for um, endgame solo dungeon farming as well. Now that we have everything equipment wise, um, what we need to do is buy a bag and cape that are lower level and that we can actually equip. So let's buy a tier three bag, a tier three bag and cape here. See you later. 
All right, as you can see, I don't have an offhand. Um, I could buy an offhand if I wanted to. Let's do it for the sake of this video. Let's just buy a shield. I don't think it matters that much. Just buy something. And then, as you can see, we have two slots remaining. We have the food slot and the potion slot. Now, before we buy the food and potion slot, what we want to do is Welcome, friend. buy a couple solo dungeon maps. So type in solo dungeon here. And go for tier 4. Wait, it doesn't work. I think you need to type in map. Exactly. You need to type in map. So buy a couple of them. I, I would say 3. 3 is enough. And we also want to buy health regen food. Which would be something like cabbage soup or dangle mouth catfish. So buy a few of these. Equip the food. And then um, you most likely will have silver remaining. And what we want to do now is buy runes. We want to buy tier 4 runes. Um, you probably learned about enchanting during the tutorial. Or actually, you didn't learn about enchanting. You did go to the artifact foundry, but you didn't learn about enchanting. Um, but what we will do is use these runes to um, upgrade these items to stronger levels. And depending on the item, you need a different amount of runes. But when you have a set like this... You need 432 in total. So simply buy 432 of these runes. All right. We still have some silver remaining. So what we can do now is buy poison potions. Just type in poison and you will see um, they cost about eight, 900 silver each. I would say just buy 10 of them. These will help enormously with scaling bosses. Now at this point, as you can see, um, we have a tier four set. And we have a tier 3 set that will get us to the T4 set. And um, we have some silver remaining. So you can keep your silver if you want to. But you can also buy souls if you want to. These are like runes. They will be used to enchant your equipment to higher levels. I think um, it's not necessary. Um, so we will not do it for this first set. What we can do though. What is an upgrade is a... Riding horse. So type in riding horse, select tier 3, and you will be able to buy one for about 10k silver. Got everything? Welcome. Just reset all these tabs and sell your donkey as a sell order. You don't need that one any longer. My pleasure. Let me quickly confirm whether we got everything. I think we do. Yeah, we got everything. So now we're going to head to the artifact foundry. You can recognize the artifact foundry by this little icon here. It's in a different place with every, within every city. Where I am, Martlock, it's here. You want to go to the third tab where it says enchant equipment. And make sure to enchant all your T4 items to 4.1. As you can see, it now has a green glow. And the first crystal is active. Which means it's 4.1. Tier 4.1. Do that for all your tier 4 items. And as you can see here on the left side, um, the item power increases along with the enchantment level. You can simply click on shift left click. You don't need to drag it here. You can click on shift left click and it will drag it automatically. Make sure if you have anything equipped to enchant those as well. As you can see, I don't have enough runes for this one. I miscalculated, I'm afraid. So I'm going to go back to town. Or, I mean, back to the marketplace and buy 16, no, 96 more runes. Let's just do that. Type in 96. Also good to know as a beginner, when you go about enchanting stuff in future, your weapon is probably the most important one. And then followed by your armor piece. These make for the highest stat increases. Your boots and helmet aren't as important, so prioritize your weapon and armor, basically. Alright, now as you can see, we have our first T4 set, actually T4.1 set, and um, we're ready to go for the first solo dungeon as a free man. So, use the map, as you can see, it's found in Hater, so that's where we will go.
Once you enter the dungeon, simply use one of your Dangle Mouth Catfish. As you can see, it provides a health regen, which is really nice because during solo dungeons you will go from pack to pack and you don't want to wait for your health to regen basically, so... And then just simply start killing the monsters and make sure to loot the silver, it will make for a lot of silver over time. If you pull too many mobs, you can activate your armor, which will make for health on attack for about 8 seconds or 15 hits. And if you pull too many, you can also reset. Always keep that in mind. Like, prioritize living over everything else when it's about solo dungeons. So, if you are like a complete beginner, you you might have wiped on this, on this pull here. So, if it's too much, just reset, basically. And as you can see, my health is regening pretty fast compared to normal because of the fish. And this pop lasts 30 minutes, so you don't have to use one every dungeon, just every 30 minutes whenever you're doing solo dungeons. As you can see, as I kill the monsters, um, I'm getting like various milestones, which indicates we can use our learning points to level things up. Now, you don't want to waste your learning points on bringing this one, for example, to level 2. Yeah, that's um, it's not efficient. But what we do want to do is use our learning points to be able to equip these items. So let's see if we have the milestone. As you can see, we have the milestone for this one. Although it's 20k fame only, you know, you kind of want to equip these things as fast as possible. So I would say don't overvalue the learning points too much and just bring your first set to tier 4. So unlock your first set by using learning points. The assassin shoes as well. Only two learning points for this one. The cape we cannot um, we cannot unlock through learning points whatsoever. Um, you need to farm fame and unlock the adept adventurer. So in your destiny board, um, if you go to the top, you can see like the adventurer levels, which will allow you to unlock, allow you to equip high level mounts and capes among other items. So the cape and bag is basically a matter of grind. Now at this point you can equip your first T4 set, so let me show you what skills you want to take. Let's just equip them first. Alright, on your skull account you want to take the energy shield, which is the unique ability of this item. Um, it makes for increase in armor, but also for energy regen whenever the shield is active. As for the passive, you want to take aggression for increased damage. On your mercenary jacket, you already had this one equipped, but you want to have bloodlust. Um, which restores health whenever you do damage whilst this ability is active, and you want to take Balance Mind for more damage increase. As for your Assassin Shoes, you want to have Refreshing Sprint throughout the dungeon, which will make for movement speed and cooldown reduction, um, but whenever you have difficult bosses, you can swap to Dodge, which is um, great to become immune to some of the bosses' abilities um, during the battle. As for the passive on this one, you once again want to take Balanced Mind as the passive for increased damage. On the Spirit Hunter, as I explained before, Lunging Strike is a great AoE. We just used it a couple times, but let me quickly show you. It's basically a stab, and as you stab the monsters, um, you get a buff that stacks up to three times that makes your auto attacks stronger. So make sure to utilize your auto attacks as much as possible as well. As for Forest of Spears, another great AoE ability. It is a channel ability, so do not interrupt it unless you have to dodge something. Um, honestly, these two abilities... Unlocked at level 1, they are really great for solo dungeons. Um, as for the special ability, Corrupting Steel. Now this one is just great. I'm, I'm going to show you in just a bit how it works. But um, it's like a field, like a rotten field that does damage to all the monsters standing on it. Whilst also reducing their armor. Therefore this ability is just top tier for solo dungeons. Where it's all about um, killing mobs in AoE as quick as possible. As for the passive, you, you currently have slow poison, but ideally you want to have life leech, I would say, is a nice one to have. Um, aggressive rush is nice as well, attack speed is nice as well. Any of these three are fine, so once you unlock life leech, basically start using that one, and then you can consider one of the other two. So let me quickly show you, after killing these books, let me show you how the, what is it called, Corrupting Steel works, because it's a really great ability. So I can just 
I can just throw this here. And as you can see, it creates a rotten field that does a lot of damage to the monsters that stand on it. Another tip I want to give you, by the way, is don't be greedy with your cooldowns. They are just cooldowns. Use them as much as possible to go through the dungeon as quick as possible. And since we are at the first boss, what you want to do is use one of your poison potions, which will reduce the boss's armors, allowing you to do more damage, whilst also doing some poison damage in the meantime. Now it's very likely that at the end of your first dungeon, you unlock the Adept Adventure. So at that point, you can equip your cape and bag as well. And now you have your very first Thief or Set equipped fully. And I got like 13k in loot from the final chest. And after doing the first dungeon, this is what I ended up with. I have about 15k silver now. And I have about 23k silver in items. And also some silver bags, which I will use for an additional 8k silver. Now at this point, what you want to do is just do the other solo dungeons as well. And um, reason being is you want to unlock the expert reaver. As you can see, I'm at 35k out of 78k now. And what it will do is um, unlock higher damage and defenses against T5 monsters, which we need for the next content. So at this point, simply do some solo dungeons. Um, if you don't get there with the three solo dungeon maps you have, uh, maybe buy an additional one or look around. Maybe you will find a solo dungeon map. There's also a chance one spawns as you exit your dungeon. Let's see if that happens this time. No, instead there is a corrupted dungeon. So what we will have to do now is simply look for a new dungeon or spawn a new dungeon ourselves. For the sake of this video, I'm going to look around and see. There you have one dungeon, so let's quickly jump into this one and hope no one is in it already. The first monster is here, and since it doesn't have a buff below, it means it's a regular dungeon, a system spawn dungeon, so it's a bit easier than the one we just did. There's one thing you should know is that Dungeon maps are always more difficult than regular dungeons. Anyway, at this point, just do a couple dungeons until you have the Reaver level unlocked. That's finishing my third dungeon. As you can see, I only need like, what is it? One more K of fame to unlock the Expert Reaver. So I could do another dungeon if I wanted to, but I can also choose to kill one of the mobs here in the open field, so let's see if we can find a mob or a boss and get the fame the easy way. Otherwise, it's going to be a dungeon, of course. Well, I'll just jump into the dungeon because I found this one first. Not sure if I'm going to clear it, but um, let's just see how quickly we get the uh, fame. Didn't take too long, just, uh, just one or two packs, basically. Let's just clear this um, as an extra. I'm not going to play the entire dungeon though. Um, there's no need to, I would say. So I'll just A out. You can press on A and you will teleport out. You can also find the dungeon here, exit dungeon. So now I'm simply going back to town and so far I did about three solo dungeons. This is what I ended up with. I got 35k silver. Um, 12k silver in back, so let's use that. 47k silver and 34k silver in loot. Now, since dungeons are RNG, you may get more, you may get less. Um, I didn't get any good chests, so it's more likely you will get more loot and silver than I have with those three dungeons. But, you know, if you feel like you can do more dungeons and grind until you feel content, basically. But, you know, the point of this video is to show you your options. And solo dungeons is one of your options you will always have, basically. Um, you will be doing them in the blue zones, yellow zones, red zones, and later on even in the black zones. Up to tier 8.3, whatever you want. So, now you know. Now you have, like, a build. This is a really great build for solo dungeons. If you want to, you can swap this mercenary jacket out for a cultist rope. And instead of the Adapt Scape, later on you will be able to buy a 
skilled cape and you want to buy the Tetford cape. So if you swap this out for the cultist rope and you swap this one out for the Tetford cape, you will basically have a top tier build for these sort of dungeons that will carry you all the way to the end game basically. Now we're back in town, we of course first want to repair all our items again. And then instead of going to the bank this time, I mean instead of going to the marketplace this time we're going to the bank. Because we're going to drop off our solo dungeon field. We won't need that one any longer. We won't need the fish either, but the cape, bag, poison pots and horse, those we will need. We can put the fame books here as well. Other than that, I don't think... Maybe the T4 runes, T4 souls would be useful later on. Everything else you can basically sell. We don't need any of these things. So let's, let's sell these things. Next thing we want to do is Corrupted Dungeons. Which is also instant content just like the solo dungeons. Except that you also have a bit of PvP added to the PvE. It's basically a dungeon, just like the solo dungeons, where you have a bunch of mobs and bosses that are guarding chests, but with the chance of invading another player or being invaded by another player. Um, yeah, we will do them in the blue and yellow zones, so there will be no risk of gear loss whatsoever. And the build we're going to buy for this content is as follows. We want to buy a tier 4 regular bow. So just type in... Let's see. Yes, just type in... Adapt bow, and you will get it on your screen. Once again, no enchantments. Check the. I think I think excellent quality would be nice to have with this one because we are going to have some PvP. So just go for the excellent one, even if it's a bit more expensive than the other qualities. We want to buy a hunter hood. Once again, buy an excellent one. Yeah, just buy an excellent one, even if it's a bit more expensive. And um, for the armor, we want to have Cleric Rope. And finally, for the boots, we want to have Guardian Boots. So we have all the armor pieces now. The bow is a two-handed weapon, so we can't wield an offhand. Um, now we need to buy our food and potion for this content, which will be... We will buy beef stew as our foods for this content. So just type in beef stew and I would say just buy one for now and equip that. As for your potion, I think healing potion would be a great option. You want to buy a tier 6 one. You actually want to buy a couple of them. I would say buy three of them. All right, and now we want to enchant this armor, just like we did before with the Soto dungeon set. So what we want to do is, of course, buy runes. T4 runes. I know you need 192 for this and 192 for the others. So it's like 400 minus 16, which is 384. I think 384. So a quick tip, what you can do is click on buy and then create a buy order and then just Type in 384, because that's how many we need. And then um, just check the price. It seems to be like 13, 15 silver, 18 silver. So just type in like 13 silver. And the system will buy it for you. So now if you go to the last tab, you can take all the runes you just bought. Well, we didn't buy 384, so we need to do a bit more shopping. And um, let's complete it from here. I'm not really sure what 384 minus 218 is. Oh, I made this so complicated for myself. Um, let's just buy 150 first. Oh, it's no longer available. Well, let's just buy this stack. We need 39 more. There we go. 384. I think that should be enough. Let's see, I don't really need anything else at this point. Um, it is nice to have a couple poison pots with you, so I'll just buy six more. Since it's non-lethal, we won't lose them anyway. I think I think we can just go and quickly enchant this now and make sure we have enough runes. 
And you might have noticed that I can't equip these items either, so we will take care of that in just a bit. Yes, looks like I calculated correctly this time. Let's see whether we can unlock these with the learning points or not. We can unlock this one with the learning points, so let's do that for the bow. The hood we can't, we don't have the first 20% unlocked. What about the cleric rope? Let's see. We can't either. As for the guardian boots, we can't equip that one either. So what we will do now is buy the previous items for these ones. Just like we did with the solo dungeon, but I think it's it's a good idea to go over it one more time. So what do we need for the hunter hood? Let's see. We need a North Novice Mercenary Hood. So we're simply going to reset everything here and buy Novice Mercenary Hood. And equip that. Then we have the Cleric Rope. Which we need a Novice Color Rope for. Don't be shy. And for the Plate Boots we need See you later. Novice Soldier Boots. So let's type in Novice soldier all right so we have everything equipped and let's see whether we have any fame books i think we looted a couple but i'm not sure how much xp those will they, they will give so we have one that gives 2000 fame and one that gives 1000 fame Now what you can do at this point is you could equip an offhand that you, well not an offhand, I mean a weapon that you want to level as well. So let's say, let's say you want to play, let's see, what do you want to play? Daggers? Let's say you want to play dagger. You need to kill monsters with a journeyman's dagger. So let's just equip a tier 3 dagger so the XP doesn't go to waste. So that's Buy this one, equip it. Deadly Swipe is actually unlocked at level 1. That's something I didn't know. I always thought Deadly Swipe needed some levels. Well, that's pretty cool to know. And, you know, since Dagger is a one hand, we can actually use an offhand as well. So let's see which offhand we didn't level yet. Um, well, the shield we did. Maybe the torches? Where are the torches? Here they are. Okay, the torch we didn't. So we need to equip a tier 3 torch. Alright, this way the XP doesn't go to waste and we have everything equipped. And what we can do is use this Tome of Insight first. And use this one then. And since no achievements or milestones popped, it means we cannot um, equip these. We cannot um, use the learning points yet to um, fast level them. So what we can do in this situation, if you have enough silver, you can buy a Dome of Insight. Now, I don't have enough silver. I actually noticed, like, I will actually have to sell my one gold to make that happen. But what you can do at this point is, like, do maybe one more solo dungeon, you know, and get enough silver. Um, well, you won't really need silver, but I think, like, get enough fame to make this to unlock these basically um or you know if you have enough silver you can buy a tome of insight now i'm gonna sell this one gold i have you will also see how that works so at the top right you have the gold market here you can buy and sell gold so i'm just quickly gonna sell this gold for 2.8k that gives me enough silver to buy a tome of insight and now I can just use this Storm of Insight, which will grant me 10,000 combat fame, which will, you know, give us enough XP to level all the items to tier 4 that we need for Corrupted Dungeons by using learning points. So let's click on the next milestone. There we go. So Leather Hood is something we needed. What else did we need? Plate Boots, if I remember right. It's Guardian Boots. Yes. And cleric rope. So we need cloth rope 
to tier 4. There we go. Now at this point you used about 30, 32 learning points. Which, you know, isn't that bad of a loss when you get one solo dungeon build and one corrupted dungeon build in turn. So that's, that's pretty great actually. Now in the corrupted dungeon, the reason we're going with this build, so let me quickly equip it. The reason we're going with this build to the Corrupted Dungeon is just like the Solo Dungeon, we need something that doesn't require crazy high levels. And with the regular bow, you have an insane single target um, buff, basically. You have AoE on your W, and Frost Shot, which is the second ability you see here, is unlocked at level 3. So if we go to the Destiny board, we can see it's unlocked at level 3. And you will be level 3 in no time. Therefore... Um, you can use explosive arrows until then, and then you can start using frost shots to kite your opponents even better. But sometimes explosive arrows actually is better for the matchup, and it's definitely better for the PvE side of things as well within the Corrupted Dungeons. As for your Q ability, your first ability, um, based on your opponent, you will be using one of these two. So that makes the bow a great weapon for someone that just started out. Now the passive... Um, you do have to level it a bit, but slow poison isn't that bad of a passive either. It will slow your opponent. Therefore, you know, the regular bow is a pretty good choice. Um, Hunter Hood, this makes for a reflect ability. Basically, when you pop it, um, enemies and enemies do damage on you, they will receive 70% of that damage back. Basically, a reflect ability. You've most likely seen it in other games. Um, you want to take the Balanced Mind, or actually, Swiftness. I think Swiftness would be better, because um, the regular bow benefits a lot from attack speed. As for your armor, you have um, the Cleric Rope, um, where you want to take the Aggression passive for damage. And you have the Everlasting Spirit, which is a shield that grants you immunity and increases your damage. So, when an enemy is doing damage to you, pop this one, you will become immune for a couple seconds and allow you to dish out even more DPS. As for your Guardian Boots, whilst doing the Corrupted Dungeon, you can use a Run or Rejuvenating Sprint. Based on your matchup, you can take Giant, which will increase your health by a lot, and basically make you some sort of turret that's attacking, standing still, and attacking. But this ability does have a high cooldown, so if you need to kite, maybe you're better off with Run or Rejuvenating Sprint in PvP as well. Um, we're going to select the PvE abilities here, because that's what we are going to start off with. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take Energy Regen, just in case, if I need energy. I'm going to take Ment Bounce, um, which will make for some healing. And I'm going to take Rejuvenating Sprint, actually, for some extra healing. And this will be my, this will be my PvE setup for the bow. Now we have everything we need to get started with the Corrupted Dungeon, so I'm going to drop off the Actually, I don't need to drop them off. I can actually sell these armor pieces. Welcome, friend. All right. So this this is what your loadout looks like, your inventory looks like when you want to start heading off to your first corrupted dungeon. Now, unlike solo dungeons, you cannot spawn corrupted dungeons with a map. So we will have to go out and look for one. Um, we can go to the blue zones or the yellow zones for that. Um, if you go to the corrupted dungeons in the red zones. Or the black zones, they will be full loot. They will be lethal, full loot. So don't go there yet. You know, once you are more comfortable, you can head there. It will make for more exciting PvP. But for now, we don't want the full loot aspect. It's way too risky for a beginner. So what we want to do is go to one of the safer zones. I'll just go southeast of Martlook here and start looking for my first corrupted dungeon. The entrance actually looks like a solo dungeon, except it looks a bit more scary with um, red lights coming out of it instead of green lights. Not to be confused with the red lights in Amsterdam. Now this portal we just passed here. I quickly want to go about it because um, you may pass one and you may think like, whoa, that looks, that looks really cool. Um, you don't want to enter it as a beginner because entering this is basically like entering a black zone. All those portals you see, they lead to the roads of Avalon, uh, mists of Avalon, and those are all full loot areas. So don't go in them. 
not yet. Later on, you will have a lot of fun within those portals, but for now, hold off, basically. <laughs> Let's not do anything crazy just yet. Now, the Corrupted Dungeons are very popular, I must say, so it can take some time sometimes to uh, look, find one, actually. But they can spawn base. They can spawn in like the solo dungeon you see here. It could have spawned as a corrupted dungeon as well. So we just happen to see like here another one. We just happen to see a lot of solo dungeons and no corrupted dungeons, unfortunately. There we are. This is our very first corrupted dungeon. As you can see, we will do the hunter level. We can't enter the slayer or stalker level from here because it's a blue or yellow zone. Um, the enemies are tier 5, that's why we wanted to have the tier 5 reaver level unlocked. That's why we did the solo dungeons first. Um, and as you can see, PvP results in a knockdown, which means it's not lethal. Required item power is 800, we have 845. And, you know, if you have, like, extra money lying around, you can use souls to upgrade this to 4.2, and you will be even stronger within the corrupted dungeons. Now let's go and enter our very first corrupted dungeon. Once you're inside the Corrupted Dungeon, you will see this shrine here, this pillar. Um, you can decide not to activate it if you don't want a higher risk of PvP. But I personally want the PvP. Uh, I want to show you guys what that is like, so I will activate it. This basically tells, like activating this basically tells the system, I want to invade other players. Other players can always invade you. There's always the chance of them invading you. But by activating this, you will also be able to invade them. And that's just RNG, so... Just wait it out, basically. Now, if you open the map, um, you can see the layout of the monsters. And where you see, like, these little rooms with just one dot in it, it means it's a boss room. So this is a boss room. And here we have a boss room to the left. Oh, I just thought I was being invaded, but um, that was not the case. Got scared there for a second. And this, this um, area here is a boss room where you see, like, three dots. It's always the same structure, so... These are the three places where there is a boss and where there is a chest for you to gain loot. So try aiming for those. You do want to kill all the monsters on your way as well, but try aiming for those. For the best and rewards possible. Like as much, as many rewards as possible. Now you will notice there are a lot of um, traps within the Corrupted Dungeons. Um, and you need, to, you need to get used to them basically. You will learn over time what each one of them do. Um, you can actually use them in PvP, you know, to outsmart your enemy, use them to your own advantage. But of course, it can go the other way as well. You can also, you know, lose a fight because of the traps, basically. Make sure to loot the silver. There's a lot of silver in the Corrupted Dungeons, so make sure to loot that. Use your beefs too, the moment you enter, basically. And just like the solo dungeons, focus as much as possible on um, neglecting damage instead of doing damage. So just focus on dodging, avoiding damage, staying alive, basically. And these bosses have like a fixed um, patterns. You will get used to them over time. Every time he reaches like 40-50%, he will do that attack he just did. Every time he reaches like 30%, he will buff himself up and become even stronger. And as you can see, the bow, the regular bow simply shreds through the boss here. And this is our very first chest from the Corrupted Dungeons. Use your sprint ability as much as possible within the Corrupted Dungeons to move around as quickly as possible. And you know, you can also use these traps like this one. This one makes you jump. So you can use them as a form of mobility. This purple one here, it's, um, it's a silence field. It will silence everyone within it. This little guy here is a lava monster. When you when you hit it, it will um, create a lava field. So I'll just hit it to show you. But yeah, you will get used to them over time. And you will be able to use them um, to your advantage. I accidentally hit the one on the right. But as you can see, it uh, laid out a field, which is a slowing field. So be careful with that. And your goal within the Corrupted Dungeon basically is, if you are in for the PvP, um, that's down to the system, right? But you will see on the right, on the right you can see a 
bar, like a progress bar. Um, as you kill the monsters and the bosses, it will fill up. And you will basically spawn the biggest boss, the final boss, by reaching 100. Now, you will notice I just got a message that says Infernal Powers move you to another place. That means we, will, we are about to invade another player. So now we will um, teleport to another player's dungeon. And you want to make sure, like the first thing you want to make sure is that you swap to your PvP abilities. In our case, we want to swap to Retaliate. We want to swap to Everlasting Spirit. And let's just swap to Giant right off the bat. And we will go for Multishot here uh, to keep the enemy away as much as possible. Now, after you spawn, you will have monsters around you and make sure to clear a path for yourself. Because otherwise, you know, those monsters will keep chasing you, drain your HP. Which is, which is, you know, very, um, very dangerous, basically. And there is our very first enemy. You can see him on the uh, bottom corner, on the bottom left. So just pop your E and W, it will buff you up. Use your Q to keep him away from you and use your Hunter Hood. And pop your Cleric Robe as he uh, is da doing damage to you. Pop your Guardian Shoes whenever you don't have anything else. And make sure to use your E and W again when they are off cooldown. Now this guy is in tier 5, so we are doing a pretty great job of killing him basically. Once you kill him, make sure to loot your Silver and he will drop a bag. And there you have like rewards for defeating your enemy and then within um, within like 30 seconds you will get teleported back to your own dungeon if you want to you can use those 20 30 seconds to kill some monsters but you know most of the time you will notice uh, it it's a bit chaotic and you will spend the time looting basically once you're back in the dungeon back in your own dungeon first um Clear the monsters around you so that, you know, you have, like, peace of mind, basically. And once you've done that, change back to your PvE skills. So, I noticed we didn't really need mana before, or energy, so we can keep this on Retaliate. We didn't really need Mant Wounds either, but I do want to swap um, my shoes to Rejuvenating Sprint, and I want to swap to that the shot. Alright, let's go to the next boss. So, now we want to go to the other two bosses. And after killing those two, maybe we will have to kill one or two more mobs. But, final boss will spawn basically after. Pretty lucky with our second chest. Um, a blue one, uncommon. Um, in case you didn't know, there are four rarities. You have green, which is common. You have blue, which is uncommon. Followed by purple, which is epic, rare. I'm not, I'm not really sure what it's called. And then you have, um, then you have like orange, yellow, orange, which, um, which is legendary, and that's that's the highest one. Now, uncommon, 28k. I'm not complaining as a beginner. I think that's that's pretty great, actually. And we still have two more chests to go. We will go to the uh, side boss on the north side. And then we will go to the final boss. Now that we killed enough monsters, the final boss found. It's uh, marked on the map. So basically go there, kill the final boss. And you will get your final reward from the Corrupted Dungeon. And before you go to the boss, make sure to equip your Poison Pots. It will help speed things up. And there we go. That's the uh, final boss. Um, you will often notice there is a bag with the final boss. So make sure to loot that. Can be some real good stuff there. And here we have the purple chest. So now we've seen green chest, blue chest, and purple chest. This one gave us... It's actually called the rare chest. What did I say? Epic? I think I said epic chest, yeah? Um, yeah, this one actually gave us 
40k and 20k, like 18k silver in bags. So really great, um, really great rewards for new players, if you ask me. So out of our first, very first corrupted dungeon, we got a, we got some PVE, like we farmed fame, right? We got some silver from the mobs. Um, we got a PVP battle that we won and got some rewards from there. And we got um, loot from doing the dungeon, basically. We got 28k in silver. Let's quickly use all of that. And we have 93k silver in loot. I think that's, I think that's really amazing. Now, at this point, um, if you haven't done all the bosses yet at this point, I would recommend you do them. You know, maybe you cleared too many side monsters and you went for the final boss straight away. Um, you can clear the side bosses um, and then you can press on A to exit the dungeon. And you can also, if you did the side bosses, you can also click on this little portal here and you can either click on surface or go to the next dungeon. Um, since you are in a non-lethal corrupted dungeon, you can spam these corrupted dungeons as much as you want. So I would recommend you chain them. You still have like 15 minutes on your food. So, you know, you can get two, maybe three out of of these corrupted dungeons out of um, out of one food. Um, so maybe you can go back with 200k, 300k instead of 100k. But in my case, I think I'm going to surface here because I want to um, show you guys other options as well that you uh, that you have as a new player. And as you can see, a solo dungeon spawn. So if you feel like doing a solo dungeon, you can just hop into that one. Corrupted dungeon next to it. Both the solo dungeons and corrupted dungeons are something you can do on a regular basis, on a constant basis to get fame, loot, um, some PvP experience. I think I think it's really um, great for new players. When I was a new player myself, we didn't have solo dungeons or corrupted dungeons. It was all about risking your gear and, you know, um, going out for group dungeons in the black zone. So, definitely uh, major improvements for new players there. Even the tutorial. I don't think we had a tutorial. <laughs> I don't think we had one. But nowadays, it's really good. Like, um, I did the tutorial twice now uh, for the sake of this video. And the first time I did it, I paid a lot of attention to it. And I must say, they really did a great job explaining the basics of the game during the tutorial. But more so during the quests you have after, where they explain like all the different buildings. They even explain what the realm gate is and, and more. So I think it's really great. I think the um, new player experience has come a far, far way, guys. For real. And with the content you have available to you, even more so. Now that's like my habit is always to repair my items whenever I'm in town. I don't like having I don't like having damaged items. So at this point I'll just go to the bank. And right now, you know, you're at the point where you have a build for the solo dungeon, you have a build for the corrupted dungeon. By the way, you can click on sh shift, left click, and you can drop your items like that in a quick way. Actually, I'm not really sure why I'm stashing these. I won't need them. I'll just stash my solo dungeon and corrupt the dungeon build, but everything else, you know, these ones, these ones, runes you want to keep, souls you want to keep, everything else I'll basically sell on the market to make more silver. Now what you can do at this point is you can equip your PvE set once again, so let's do that. Let's equip our PvE set, which was this set right here. Poison pots. We are missing food, so we will quickly... Well, actually, we have food here. We have the dangle about catfish. So what you can do now is, um, you know, if you want to, another great game feature that has been added not too long ago is loadouts. If you press on L of, or if you click on your um, name here and go to loadouts, um, you can create a loadout. So I'll call this um, solo dungeon build. You can start it from your current equipment and create it. This way, you, you created a loadout that you can equip anytime. So let's say, let's say I just came back from Corrupted Dungeons and I have my Corrupted Dungeon items. I just put them in the bank and I want to go do solo dungeons. I can click on select loadout here, select the one I want and then press on equip and it will automatically equip everything for you. And now we have our solo dungeon builds 
our solo PvE builds equipped once again, what we are going to do is something that you can safely do from town every day. Now, I don't do this any longer because um, the amount of silver I get for me isn't impressive any longer. But if you want to, you can go right here to the Expedition Master and you can do the Adept Individual Expedition every day. Okay, so what... Um, let me see. Next daily bonus available in 15 hours. Okay, so because we did the... What is it called? We did the... Um, we completed the quest today and got an Adept Royal Sigil, right? Or maybe it's because we did the expedition during the tutorial. That's probably why I can't get the daily bonus now. But this is something you can do every day. It takes, it honestly takes like five, six minutes. Um, not so long. And you will get another Adept Royal Sigil for it as a reward. And some silver even. So it's it's about 40k silver in total. Um, which as a beginner is, is very nice to have. So... Try to do this on a daily basis, I would say. Don't do the tier 5 one, because this one is actually cheaper than the tier 4. So just stick to the tier 4, I would say. Now at this point, you have a solo dungeon build that's very good for all levels of solo dungeons. So when you advance to tier 5, tier 6, even 8.3 solo dungeons, this build is very great. And like I said before, you can equip the Cultist Rope and the Tetford Cape. Um, for even more damage, even faster clearing. And that's actually like the best solo dungeon build in the game that you can use with other weapons as well. So if you want to play other weapons, just swap it out. You are not limited to the Spirit Hunter. You also have a really great build for the um, Corrupted Dungeons. Although Corrupted Dungeons, since it is PvP, um, it is meta bound. So, you know, the meta can change at some point and you may be better off with a different build. But honestly, this... This, in general, is a very solid build, but I do strongly recommend you check out some Corrupted Dungeon Build videos to see which builds you like and which ones are meta at that moment. Um, I also went ahead and bought a ox, a tier 3 ox, and some gathering tools. I did a bit of gathering. Um, you can do that as well as one of your future options. You know, you can start off in the blue and yellow zone completely safe. If you are a beginner, maybe stone is the best. I mean, stone has been the best resource to gather for a really long time now, so I would definitely go for stone if I were a beginner today. Um, you know, I hope I did a great job of explaining how everything worked so far. And honestly, from here on, I think, um, aside from doing solo dungeons, corrupted dungeons, and gathering, and the daily expedition, maybe start delving into personal or player islands. I have a guide on that. I will make sure to link it below. And my personal recommendation would be find a guild through the official Albion Online Discord or maybe through Reddit or something. Um, find a guild, a community that is friendly, like new player friendly, beginner friendly, uh, welcoming to new players and join such a guild and you will have access to so much more content. Although you have a lot of solo options to today, nowadays, um, when you are in a guild, the amount of content you have access to increases tenfold honestly and it becomes so much more fun with other players playing against groups and stuff it's just really great honestly um i hope i did a great job of explaining things in this guide uh, i'm very sorry that i said um a lot you know i think we can count like 200 arms in this video uh, i need to get better at that for sure i haven't normally i script my videos you can find a bunch of other videos other guides um, that will definitely help you out within your Albion journey on my channel. So feel free to subscribe. Feel free to take a look at my channel and take a look around. Maybe you'll find something that interests you. Um, I don't have much to say anymore. I really hope, you know, if you watch this guide up to this point, I would really appreciate a comment below so I know, like, the people actually watch it all the way to the end or not. And let me know what you thought of it. Um, if you have any feedback for me or any tips, I will take it to heart. All I hope, honestly, is that you have a lot of fun in this game. I made a lot of fun memories, and I hope you will too. Nothing else to say at this point, so I wish you good luck in your journey, and take care. I'll see you next time.